So we're at the end of the conference now. Uh, what do you think has come out of, of, of this two-day meeting? I must say that uh, from our perspective, we're particularly pleased on how this has worked out. The forum um, that was created a couple of years ago um, has had a kind of loose structure. And this initiative taken by the government of Bangladesh to bring together uh, a wider range of countries at, uh, at senior political level um, to confront the issues that are really on the international agenda after Copenhagen, after uh, Cancun and going into, into Durban um, has, I think, been significant in that the countries have come together and they are indeed vulnerable countries. They are not responsible for the, the mess of the climate. And they've basically said, okay, we're not that, but things are pretty bad and steps have to be taken. Um, we are prepared to do things ourselves, to take the high moral ground. Um, the finance mechanisms are not working, despite promises which are turning to be largely hollow. Um, it would be good to have money so that we can do this better and be more effective, but we're going to get on with it. Mm -hmm. So it is, um, I think, a, a new realism, if I may. It's a, it seems to me that we're, we're dealing with um, the unity of the, of the relatively, or the vulnerable, obviously, and the relatively weak vis-a-vis -vis some of the, the larger countries, but unity makes strength. And we would like to hope that, on the one hand, uh, like to hope, we're, we're seeing, I think, that on the one hand, countries are saying, we're going to do things ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're going to share lessons learned. We're going to um, help each other um, and try and do things ourselves that we can. Uh, because they're disparate. They're vulnerable, but some are vulnerable to drought, and some are vulnerable to floods, and others are vulnerable to sea level rise. Um, we're going to do things our ourselves. Um, we're going to consolidate uh, our work that we can do together. And we're going to point out the uh, ridiculousness of some of the, the things that are going on now. Mm -hmm. um, and their voice, I think, as they've adopted in the Declaration, is one of saying, hey, we have to get on with this. This is not just a question of moving commas around in a conference room. This is not a question of the blame game alone. Um, this is not something that is only about our children's children. The, the bad effects of climate change are with us now. Um, we're having to deal with them now, in the health area and uh, degradation. Our populations are suffering. Um, so we have to deal with it now. And the sooner the rest of the world wakes up to this, the better. Um, we will not save the, the planet on our own, but damn it, we're going to start. We've heard a lot about the uh, a lot about moral leadership and and and, and leadership in general at, uh, at this meeting. How do you think that's going to play out over over the next well, several years? Um, and what are the international implications going to be of, of these small vulnerable countries or, or vulnerable countries really leading the way on the climate agenda? First of all, I think it's quite significant that the UN Secretary General chose to be here to open the conference uh, and to be as outspoken as he has in terms of the importance of these countries making their voice heard in the international negotiations. And he was speaking most imminently of, of uh, Durban. Um, I th one of the really sad aspects of this debate uh, is that there are large portions of public opinion uh, in industrialized countries in particular, but uh, in the US uh, in very particular, 
uh, that don't believe this is something they should be worrying about. They don't believe, apparently, that uh, uh, the way that man is, and women, but mostly men, have been treating the planet uh, is doing this kind of damage and that it will have the kind of uh, impact on future generations that practically all scientists are uh, pointing to at this stage. So clearly there is uh, uh, the importance of leadership that is underlined here, the importance of public, and, uh, public education, sensitization, not scaremongering, but, but in fact realizing that there are things that can be done now, and they need to be done now. The effects of climate change are upon us, uh, and clearly there are, the way the process is going uh, means that the interest of these countries, for example, in having access to finance for adaptation uh, is very real because they're going to have to adapt to what's happened already. Uh, but the, the mitigation work has to start early. Um, otherwise, the, the impact is, is going to be so much greater later on. Um, and yes, uh, that's a little bit further down the line. It is our our children's children may be uh, at the, w the really bad stage. But the really bad stage is, if you're looking at a country like, like Bangladesh, there's over 20 million people displaced. Um, and if I was the Bangladesh's neighbors, I'd be as worried about that as Bangladesh. Um, even today, in the, the host country here, with the rivers that are flooding uh, because due to, to climate change, each year a minimum of 100,000 people are displaced from the erosion that is done of the land that they're living and farming on. Um, it's upon us. It's here. There's estimated at least uh, 300,000 deaths a year from the health dimension. So, um, there the logic of this has to sink in uh, uh, and uh, for people none are so blind as they who will not see but people need to start really seeing and I, we would hope that the the moral high ground to come back to that that these countries are um, many of them have actually many of them a number of them have already pledged to be carbon neutral uh, being being Maldives, being Samoa, being uh, Ethiopia, um, and one or two others, um, that uh, does demonstrate that uh, if these countries can make the effort um, when they're not doing so badly, indeed they're not doing badly at all vis-a-vis -vis their contribution to the to the, uh, the 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 carbon footprint, then uh, others should really come to the party. And what is it that's been inspiring about, about this meeting for you? There's been some incredible stories coming out of, out of, out of the, the various countries here. What is it that you've, you're going to take away from this meeting? I, I think the, um, the, the way that the, the countries have... Uh, we had in the, in the, uh, in the closed plenary, uh, ministerial plenary today, a number of country statements. And it was really quite interesting to see how much convergence there was and how much um, determination there was to, to face up to the problems themselves, to basically say, we're not responsible, as I was trying to say a little earlier, we're not responsible, but um, we're getting the effects of this and something has to be done. Uh, that's from people who are in a position of political leadership, it's, uh, that's important. So that a group is determined to move ahead, there's a, a work program there in the sense that they're willing, they're talking about doing things in Durban, they're talking about looking ahead to Rio and beyond. They are not look, expecting quick fixes, but, um, but they are prepared to start to, uh, to do things. Uh, some have already started doing things, so I don't want to use the word start doing things. They are doing things. Uh, and to getting it across to, to others. So it's not just about conferences. Thanks very much. It's been uh, great speaking to you.